Well, in some breaking news coming in this afternoon from Pakistan, the former Pakistan president Parvez Musharraf has been awarded a death sentence for high treason. The sentence has been given by a special court in Pakistan. This is the big breaking news coming in from Pakistan as we speak. And uh, joining me to talk a little bit more about this is Anas Malik, uh, our bureau chief in Pakistan. And Anas, uh, give us the details of this particular case. Uh, massive verdict there to give death sentence sentence to a former president, uh, what more can you share at this point? Absolutely, uh, Bhairavi. This case has been pursuing since December 2013. Uh, this act was done by Musharraf uh, on, uh, on the 3rd of November 2007. Uh, the case was lodged by the, by the PMLN government, the former government, in 2013 that he indulged in high treason by abrogating the constitution uh, on the 3rd of November in 2007 and imposing emergency in Pakistan. Now, a special court was constituted. Uh, it heard the case uh, rigorously on uh, th uh, three months uh, regardless. And uh, after that, it was due to announce the verdict on the 28th of November. But the, uh, the state had pleaded to defer the verdict. Uh, the, uh, the, court, the Islamabad High Court had ordered the special court that... On ex party basis, it was heard on the 5th of December and then today. Today, as well, the Musharraf lawyer was not able to satisfy the court, and the court said very clearly that since Musharraf has failed to produce himself, therefore they will go ahead and announce the verdict. They also, uh, the, uh, the, the verdict majority is uh, since it was a three member bench, a uh, uh, special court of three, member, three judges. Two is to one is the verdict, uh, the ratio of the verdict is. Uh, two judges were in favor of the fact that uh, he should be punished, and they have uh, sentenced him to death. Uh, he's been uh, awarded death sentence in high prison case for indulging in the abrogation of the Constitution of Pakistan on the 3rd of November 2007. Yes, very All right. So now just to put this in perspective, now Parvez Musharraf, of course, doesn't live in Pakistan. He is in Dubai. So how does it really affect... Uh, him is there an extradition treaty with Dubai? How does this pan out? Well, it, Pakistan does not have an extradition treaty with Dubai, but something that has to be taken into consideration that uh, the, the, the Pakistan federal cabinet recently amended the law, the Pakistan law, which says that in the cases of extradition, death penalty or capital punishment would not be applicable. Parvez Musharraf, the former military dictator, is currently in the hospital in Dubai. He is currently under treatment. So Pakistan would have, uh, one, he has the right to appeal in the higher court, that is the Supreme Court, that is within 30 days uh, uh, from this judgment. And if he, if he fails to appeal in the Supreme Court within 30 days, then the government can proceed through legal channels, and that is through uh, the diplomatic channels to extradite Musharraf. We've seen up in the past that uh, criminals of different nature have been extradited and repatriated back to Pakistan. But those were different cases. In, the, in uh, Musharraf's particular case, we've seen that he had been, he had been seeking refuge in the UAE. Uh, he's, had, uh, he's had a legal uh, a travel document as well. So in the case of Musharraf, it would be very interesting as to how what the government's uh, strategy would be. Yes, sir. Right. And Anas, then the question, of course, emerges, what is the intent of this government? How serious are they in pursuing this case uh, with another country to bring back, as you said, uh, an ailing Musharraf who is currently in hospital? Well, the, in the intent of the government is, uh, if, if you talk about the government's intent, it is not visible at all. Because remember, on the 28th of uh, uh, November, just last month, when the Islamabad High Court verdict came, it was the government who went uh, to ask for the uh, differing of the verdict and the adjournment of the verdict that was initially supposed to be announced on the 28th of November. This government particularly does not seem very, very keen on pursuing the trial of Musharraf or any, for that matter, or, or for any uh, dictator uh, that has to do with some historical uh, lineage as well, given Imran Khan's history with Perez Musharraf as well back in 2002 when Musharraf had, uh, had offered Imran Khan to be the prime minister uh, during his time when he, was, uh, when he had an assembly back then. So uh, by and large, the common impression is that the government uh, would not be pursuing the case as much as it has been done previously in the PMN time. Remember, uh, this case was lodged in December 2013. Musharraf was indicted on uh, on the 31st of March 2014. And then since then, that case had not been pursued very much. But in 2015, Musharraf went to do an inter-court appeal and flew abroad. He was placed on the exit control list. The court had ordered, uh, uh, the, uh, the inter-court had uh, ordered 
that he should be put off the exit control list because he was seeking a treatment abroad. And since then, Musharraf has not returned. So there are a lot of question marks when it comes to how the, this case will be pursued. But one thing that is for sure that the government, this, this current government of Imran Khan, is not very keen on pursuing this case. Yes, there is. Right, absolutely. And Anas, of course, this court then now, uh, this verdict can re be reappealed, as you rightly said, in a higher court that is either the High Court of Islamabad or. Uh, or the Supreme Court of Pakistan, what is the legal process here involved uh, for an appeal for Musharraf and his lawyers? Well, just a correction, since this was a special court that was constituted of high court judges and on the orders of the Supreme Court, so the only uh, forum where this can be appealed is the Supreme Court itself within a span of 30 days. That right to appeal of 30 days is given to any convict or any uh, 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 any uh, one who has been punished within 30 days as per law uh, in Pakistan. So in all likelihood, we're expecting that Musharraf or, on the, or, or, or his lawyers might just be appealing to the Supreme Court. And if, if in 30 days they fail to appeal against this judgment to the Supreme Court, then the government is, law, uh, is uh, lawfully binded to pursue the case of extradition and ensure that Musharraf comes back to Pakistan by hook or by hook. That is the law. That is that is what the law is, and then ensure that justice is done. Okay. Right. And of course, uh, this uh, is clearly Anas ironic because uh, Musharraf, of course, being sentenced to death. There is Nawaz Sharif who has already been prosecuted in uh, a corruption case. And there's uh, Mr. Zardari also being prosecuted. So it seems uh, that in the past few years, it's either the courts or the political class, the current dispensation that is certainly going after all the former leadership in Pakistan. Well, uh, Nawaz Sharif, the former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's case is a, it's a, an exceptional case because he came back from London. He left his ailing wife, who is now no more in this world, Kutum Nawaz, uh, and came back to Pakistan to face his trial and then subsequently his punishment as well. We don't have such an example in, pa in Pakistani history where anybody who's been abroad and uh, they, they left that life and then came back to Pakistan to face the trial and then subsequently their punishment as well. In the case of the uh, uh, former president Asim Ali Zadrari, when you get to see him being indicted in the case, he has been arrested. He's currently on bail as he speaks. He's also sick, but he's currently on bail as he speaks. Uh, having said that, there's a common impression in Pakistan that the the the, uh, the slogan of accountability by the current government is only for political opponents and not for those who have in in uh, uh, in actually indulging in abrogating the law or violating the law or for that matter for violating the constitution as well when it comes to case of the former president and dictator general Boris Musharraf because as I said the uh, Musharraf has been out. Since 2016, uh, in the past three months, uh, the, the trial had been heard on almost daily basis by the special court. The government had been, uh, the court had been making repeated requests or orders that Musharraf should be produced. But Musharraf, uh, absent, he uh, one or the other, he, he used to say, it is not to say that he is sick, he cannot travel. In fact, uh, the, uh, uh, when he was offered that he should go to the Pakistani consulate in Dubai, he said that he would not be traveling over there. Uh, of late, we saw the, the, the statement that we saw from Musharraf on the 3rd of December, just uh, some hours before the court hearing. He saw that was the first time that he said that uh, he is willing to record a video statement or if, uh, if uh, any judicial commission travels. That was the first on that, but by and large, the, the common impression here in Pakistan, and rightly so, that this the slogan of accountability or rogue accountability is only for political victimization and not to go against those who have been who have actually been involved in violating the law or constitution. Yes, thank you. Right. Anas, uh, also joining us on the phone line at the moment is Shashan Sareen. Uh, Shashan Sareen, your reactions to a special court in Pakistan sentencing the former, uh, well, uh, well, Pervez Musharraf to a death sentence. We know that he's in Dubai at the moment, but of course, massive implications nonetheless. I'm not sure about the implications, but uh, yes, I think it's, it's more symbolic rather than anything else. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, he's not in Pakistan. He's never going to come back to Pakistan. But the very fact that the court has pronounced this judgment, look, number one, if you look at the history of 
the Pakistani judiciary, every time somebody is out of office, uh, that is when the judiciary gathers the courage to pass uh, some kind of a judgment against them or declare dictators as usurpers. Uh, and this has been going on right from the time of Ayub Khan. Uh, again, Yahya Khan, Ziaul Haq, all of that. Number two, in this particular case, they have gone a step further, I must say that, uh, by pronouncing the death sentence on somebody who is still alive. Normally, uh, it would be after somebody was out of power, but they never went to this extent. They would declare somebody a usurper, but they never went to this extent. Uh, number three, uh, the fact is that in this particular case, I think it is an open and shut case, because uh, when Musharraf uh, announced the... Um, uh, or de uh, declared the sec uh, did the second coup in uh, 2007. Uh, he uh, uh, he declared emergency not as president of Pakistan, but as the chief of army staff. Uh, and there is no way a chief of army staff can declare uh, you know an emergency in the country and usurp all powers. Uh, so clearly he had violated the constitution and he had carried out an unconstitutional act, and it was virtually a coup. So it is under that particular. Uh, uh, you know that that on that particular act that he has been, uh, you know, uh, this, this treason trial was carried out against him. Uh, the question now is, uh, yes, it will spook some people in the army because remember that this judgment has come at a time when the courts have already, you know, in a sense, uh, thrown a bit of a tangle around the army on the issue of the, uh, the terms and conditions of the appointment of the army chief and his extension. So um, that is but quite interesting. To that extent, it is interesting because it does yeah, okay. the courts. Shishan Sarin, I'll have to interrupt you there. We're also joined by Emma Shane, senior journalist from uh, Lahore at the moment. And Emma Shane, your thoughts on Parvez Musharraf there uh, being given the death sentence by a special court. I know that he can, of course, reappeal and he is in Dubai. Uh, but your first comments on what's happened in court today. Well, what it appears like is that it's just a facade, especially given the fact that General Pervez Musharraf's case was running much before former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's case. And Nawaz Sharif was very swiftly given, very quickly given, um, under very suspicious circumstances, punishment for his alleged crime. Whereas General Pervez Musharraf's case had been going on, and Pervez Musharraf was in the custody of the Pakistani authorities, and it was the government and the courts that allowed Musharraf to go out of the country. And it was re and until recently when where Prime Minister Imran Khan uh, kind of taunted the um, judiciary for allowing Nawaz Sharif to go abroad on medical grounds, uh, when the judiciary actually talked about how the judiciary was so strong that they had punished former prime ministers and were also uh, dealing with the case of a former di military dictator. And this is when it got a little funny uh, in the political atmosphere because, uh, you know, the judiciary has been, as uh, Kishant also spoke, the judiciary has uh, tried to tackle the issue of the extension of the Chief of Army Staff of Pakistan because almost every Chief of Army Staff wants to stay in power as the Chief. Um, but, you know, everybody got their hopes up and everybody thought, okay, this is going to make a difference. It was another facade where after a while, Although hmm. the legal arguments went against the extension of Chief of Army Staff, the court, in a very uh, unorthodox manner, allowed the Chief of Army Staff to continue getting extensions. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, the practical implications are absolutely zero. They will yeah. never hang a general because the military establishment and the intelligence agencies are the very institutions that allow the judges to become judges. Yes. So the judges are not going to... Thank yeah. So the practical implications, very uh, rightly you said, Emma Sheen, are, are very minimal here. But uh, Mateen Heather uh, also joining us at the moment from Pakistan. Mateen Heather, uh, explain to us what this really means. Uh, this, is this a symbolic messaging from the judiciary? Uh, would some people in the establishment think this is judicial overreach? Uh, we know that, uh, you know, some people think that uh, this government, the current government, went soft on Musharraf. They're not very keen on following through this uh, case, but it's still uh, there's a death sentence uh, in the special court. Uh, what do you make of it? 
Yes, well, uh, as far as the uh, present government of uh, Prime Minister Khan is uh, concerned, the government uh, didn't want uh, this uh, decision and wanted uh, definitely that uh, the, the verdict uh, could have been deferred, but uh, definitely today case court came up and uh, gave uh, this historic verdict, which has... Uh, uh, which, which will be definitely having uh, a very serious effect on Pakistani politics because former uh, President General Pervez Musharraf still has uh, some of the open sympathizers, some of the silent sympathizers within Pakistani political system, including the president in Pakistan. It's been a There are two options before Pakistan's government either. It would again fight a review petition against the verdict <laughs> and uh, go back. <laughs> right. Uh, so uh, your line is a bit weak there, Mateen Heather, but essentially you're making the point that this will have uh, far-reaching implications politically as well as Parvez Musharraf has been an important man. Uh, if Emir Shaheen is still with us, then uh, Emir, I'll, I'll come back to you for this. Now, there's no sort of extradition treaty, to my knowledge, with Dubai. If this was to be sort of... Uh, taken through, uh, what are the legal options now available to Musharraf, even uh, uh, as he is, well, ailing in a hospital in Dubai? There is a very famous uh, murder case of Sharaf Chisoy in Pakistan who went to Dubai hmm. and he was very swiftly extradited by Pakistani authorities. I don't think the problem is uh, whether or not it's possible to extradite Musharraf. I think the problem is that uh, the will to um, prosecute our general. My prediction is that this, also given the fact that the regime currently, which is on the face of it, Pakistan Tari Kinsaf, a political party, but the real regime is behind doors, is the one who made them. Uh, the regime would never allow such a precedence to take place. It has happened in Pakistan before where, um, you know, very surprising verdicts came from uh, special courts, but it's never going to follow through. If there was any seriousness that Musharraf was going to be given justice uh, and punished, uh, Musharraf would not have been allowed to leave the country. And um, I don't think there will be, there'll be zero effort to try to bring Musharraf back. This is just a makeup um, for the rest of the world to see that the judiciary has, because the judiciary is getting into arguments with the executive now. This is just a show of we can do something kind of an action. But it will not promulgate into anything practical. It has never and it will never. Okay, so do you see then a marked difference in uh, the government's approach to uh, Mr. Musharraf, President Musharraf's case uh, as, as compared to Nawaz Sharif's and of course uh, Asif Ali Zardari's? Really, the government has already through the Attorney General tried to withhold the um, the verdict, this very verdict, they have tried their utmost best to withhold the verdict. And, um, you know, they've come out clean in favor of the military establishment, as clean as they can. So the government who is trying to withhold a verdict is not going to do anything, it is not going to take any actions to get the general punished at all. So, I mean, anyone expecting the government to mm -hmm. implement uh, the verdict that they're trying to withhold is would be living in a fool's paradise. So absolutely no way the government is going to take any step, any practical step that um, that upsets the very creators of that government. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Madin Heather is also with us. Uh, Mr. Heather, you were making that point earlier that uh, even if the government doesn't pull through with anything on this, uh, whether it's an extradition or not, uh, you certainly believe there are political implications to this. Can you expand on that? Mr. Heather. Yes, I beg your pardon. Can you repeat your question, please? Sir, I, I was asking you that you were talking about the political implications of this case. Would you like to expand on that? Well, uh, political implications would be definitely one, that it would uh, remain a big challenge of how the present TTI government uh, to implement the decision because it would be quite difficult. Uh, as far as Pakistani establishment is concerned, Pakistani establishment would definitely not like this uh, verdict and 
they would be definitely reduced addition and as i said earlier former president still enjoys sympathizers in pakistani politics so it's not likely uh, that the cn would be implemented immediately but if the cn is not uh, implemented and there is no review petition of course there are legal implications as well for as far as political cases because uh, uh, there are number of uh, definitely silent supporters and sympathizers still in pakistani parliament and of course uh, by passing uh, a petition before the special court uh, to defer the decision the pdi government is the biggest sympathizer of former president general pervez musharraf so there would be definitely pressure from the pakistani establishment who support former president had already sought so that he could be saved from any possible conviction there are serious things and developments happening in pakistan a uh, day before supreme court of pakistan had delivered a detailed uh, judgment on pakistan's army chief extension uh, and that the jail legal and gave government a six month right. that within six months this has to be within 24 hours this has again emerged this decision has again emerged as a biggest challenge to the pakistan uh, government in pakistan all right uh, so metin heder and uh... Uh, uh, and all our guests thanks very much indeed for emma shane thanks very much both for joining us and sharing your perspective on what this uh, well death sentence verdict against uh, parvez musharraf means what it signifies and of course uh, conflicting opinions on whether the government will pull through or is serious about this or not the special court handing over that verdict uh, musharraf's lawyers can appeal within 30 days remember he's in dubai he's in a hospital there and uh, the significance of course of this being political legally it seems that not much will be done to take this further now uh, well on your screens is what uh, well the former pakistani president parvez musharraf had to say while he was in hospital listen in to this comment ye kis meri nazar mein bilkul bebuniyad hai क्योंकि मैं तो गद्दारी छोड़े मैंने तो इस मुल्क के लिए बहुत खिदमत सर अंजाम दिए हैं जंगे लड़ा हुआ हूँ मैं और मुल्क की खिदमत मैंने दस साल की है तो इसलिए मैं समझता हूँ बेबुनियाद है अब यहाँ इस केस में मुझे सुनाई नहीं दे रहे सुनवाई मेरी नहीं हो रही है सिर्फ ये नहीं है कि मुझे सिर्फ मेरी सुनवाई नहीं हो रही है मेरा जो लॉयर है सलमान सख्तर उस तक को सुन नहीं रहे हैं तो मेरी नजर में बहुत ज्यादा हो रही है इंसाफ का तकाजा पूरा नहीं किया जा रहा है और राइट द फॉर्मर पाकिस्तानी प्रेसिडेंट परवेज मुशर्रफ वेल चार्ज विद हाई ट्री